Okay, in the previous video we talked about this basic subtractor in which it, we completed the design to implement this circuit VO equals to negative 1 over 0.56 VTR plus 2.5 1.5 and that K1 is 1 over 0 0.56 where V1 is VTR and K2 equals 2.5 times V2 equals 1.5 volts where V2 is the reference and we completed this first design on an earlier video now we're going to take a look at this second two op amp subtractor our second design and then later on we're going to compare it with the basic subtractor so in essence what we have here is two non-inverting amplifiers now let's take a look at this first case we're going to implement this equation here the second term of 2.5 since this is a non-inverting amplifier it's R4 over R3 plus 1 and we want to have a gate of 2.5 which implies that R4 divided by R3 is 1.5 so let's say R3 is 10k this implies that R4 is 15k because 15k divided by 10 is 1.5 plus 1 is 2.5 now again there's many choices associated with this design now let's look at the second term now we note that the overall gain for we'll call k1 is 1 divided by 0.56 well we know the first this stage here is 15 over 10 or 1.5 again this is a non-inverting amplifier for this first stage so it's 1 plus over r2 over r1 so let's say R2 is 10K. Well, that implies that uh, R1 is 52.5K. So the overall gain of this is what we want is um, 1 over 0.56. So that concludes that this design for the second. Uh, to op amp configuration. So let's look and discuss and evaluate between these two designs. And let's first discuss it in terms of parts counts. Now both designs use four resistors. One, two, three, four for this basic subtractor and this two op amp also has one, two, three, four resistors. Now while the second design uses two op amps, the first one only use one op amp. So this different makes the first design the best choice under the smallest part count criteria. Now, however, the 2 op amp subtractor has both inputs applied directly to non-inverting op amp inputs. Now, why is this important? Well, these inputs have very high input resistances. Now, that means that the second design does not load the transducer or drain energy from the 1.5 volt battery. Now, this difference could be an important advantage of the second design if the transducer has a high Thevenin resistance or the interface circuit must operate for extended periods of time without servicing the battery. And that concludes the discussion for this transducer interface design.